How's everybody doing? I went to Blockbuster recently and they had a whole bunch of deals going on again. All kinds of ones. They had dollar DVDs. They had 5 for 20 Blu-rays. They had 5 for 20 DVDs. And then they had 10 for 20 DVDs. So I figured, you know what, I'm going to check that out. And Because there's a whole bunch of ones that I wanted to see in there. So I picked up 10 DVDs for 20 bucks right there. And these are all blind buys, ones I haven't seen before. I figure for $2 a piece, you can't beat that price. Low risk, high reward. 10 for 20. And I also picked up a couple other items. If you guys are a fan of my Facebook page, I posted about it a little bit ago. And that is the Dark Knight Bat Pod. I ended up picking up two of them, and I just couldn't pass up the price. You know, at first I went there, and I wasn't sure if I should get it, and I actually went home and didn't get it, and then I came back the very next day, I called them up, I was like, hey, can you hold those for me? And they were nice enough, and they held it for me, and I picked it up. I remember seeing these a while ago for a decent amount of price, and I guess it was marked down a couple times, it was marked down to $19.99, and now it's marked down to $9.99. And at first I was thinking, oh, this looks kind of cheap and cheesy, but actually when I, when I got it, I was really pleasantly surprised. It's much nicer than I was expecting. And it's a two-disc Blu-ray limited edition set right there. And all the boxes were a little dinged up. I don't know if you can see that right there. But you know what? For $9.99, oh, you can't pass up that price. Great display. And you know what the funny thing about this was? This was cheaper than the regular Blu-ray. The single-disc Blu-ray was $12.99. So this is just definitely a great deal. Very happy to get this. Now, I'm going to be honest and say The Dark Knight is not my favorite movie ever. It's not my favorite comic book adaptation movie ever. It's not my favorite Batman movie ever. In fact, it's probably my fourth favorite Batman movie. Behind the original Tim Burton Batman from 89, uh, from Batman Returns, and Batman Begins. All of those I prefer more than The Dark Knight. But I will say The Dark Knight is still a decent film. I really enjoyed Heath Ledger's performance. That was the main thing I took away from it. I felt like it should have been called uh, The Dark Knight. It should have been called Joker and Two-Face. Because I felt like Batman wasn't even the main character or even a secondary character in it. That's what it felt like to me. And I also felt like it could have been edited down a little bit too. But that's just my opinion. I know everybody loves this movie, especially the younger kids. They go wild for it. It shot up on the charts on IMDb so quick. Maybe it's just a generational thing. I'm not quite sure. But like I said, it's still an enjoyable action comic book movie. So there you go. Let me know what your favorite Batman movie is. Is it The Dark Knight? Is it the older classic Tim Burton one? Let me know. And for me, Michael Keaton will always be the best Batman. And people always say Jack Nicholson or Heath Ledger, which was the better Joker. Both very different performances, both excellent in their own right. Heath Ledger, an amazing performance as a very dark Joker. Jack Nicholson was more of a goofy, fun, creepy kind of Joker. But Heath Ledger is just all out crazy, just nuts, and just all out deranged. Now I'm actually going to be taking mine out of the box and displaying it as I feel like it should be. Displayed out on there like that. And I'm going to do a separate video doing a whole unboxing of this because it definitely deserves an unboxing. It's a very cool edition, much nicer than I was expecting, and a great deal. For the price, oh, you can't beat that price. Cheaper than the single disc Blu-ray. And most likely in the future, I'm going to be doing a giveaway for one of these. So look out for that. And next up, the bag of goodies. And like I said, these DVDs were 10 for 20 so $2 a piece. And all of these are blind buys. So if you've seen any of these movies, definitely let me know what you think of them. And first up is Kevin Spacey and Shrink. Apparently he's a psychiatrist and he has an A-list clientele. I guess he's just going through his life and what he deals with and all the stars that he deals with and things like that. Seems kind of interesting. I like Kevin Spacey, so $2? Why the heck not? Next up is Disney's The Crimson Wing, The Mystery of the Flamingos. I just thought this looked interesting, kind of like a Disney take on, you know, Into the Wild and nature kind of aspect. A lot of those nature shows can be very visually stunning, so I'm hoping that'll be the case for this. Next up is The Square. It's an Australian thriller. I've seen trailers for this before and it really intrigued me. From what I read, it's basically about a tale of how they try to uh, burn down a house and steal some money and there's murder involved and there's all kinds of crazy twists and turns and just it seems like a really good thriller. I was intrigued by it, and for $2, this is awesome. I've been wanting to see this for a while. Very happy on this one. Looks like it'll be dark and thrilling. And next up is Oliver Stone's directed W, starring Josh Brolin as George W. I actually heard a lot of great things about this. You know what? I'm really intrigued by it, and uh, I'm looking forward to checking this one out. And I really enjoy Oliver Stone. And this has a great cast. Richard Dreyfuss, Josh Brolin, Stacey Keach, Elizabeth Banks, Ellen Burstein, James Cromwell. So I'm definitely looking forward to this one. W. Next up is The Maiden Heist. It looks like a comedy heist movie. It stars Morgan Freeman, William H. Macy, uh, Christopher Walken, and Marsha Gay Harden. It looks pretty funny. 
And you know what? I haven't heard much about it, so $2 can't go wrong. Next up is Seth Rogen and Observe and Report. And honestly, I'm not a huge Seth Rogen fan. Like I've said many times before, I don't think he's leading man material. He does much better in a supporting role like in 40 Old Virgin. But you know, I decided to give it a chance. $2, why not? And Anna Ferris is in it, and Anna Ferris, oh, just gorgeous. I'll give it a chance for Anna Ferris. I'm hoping this will be better than Paul Blart Mall Cop. I really was disappointed in that movie. And Kevin James, he seems like such a likable guy, but I just don't find him to be very funny. Like King of Queens, I thought the show was enjoyable. It was okay. It wasn't great. Leah Remini, very hot. Kevin James is just like the likable average kind of guy, but he's not that funny in my opinion. And how is that show on for like, I think it was on for like 10, 11 seasons? How is that possible? I never heard anything about it. Like, I catch it on reruns now all the time. But I never really heard anybody talk about it when it was on the air. When I heard it was on for like, I think 10 seasons, I was shocked. But anyways, Paul Blart, I hope it'll be better than that. Just looks like your standard like mall security comedy kind of movie. Next up, The Final Destination. Of course, there was another one that already came out. I guess it's going to be like Saw where they put out a new one every year. But I know there's going to be another Saw movie too. I know they said the last one was the final one. But yes, they're going to make another one. It's, you know they're going to. They're just going to keep potentially aborting these movies out. And uh, I'm just not a big fan. I like the first one of The Final Destination, and I saw a couple of the other ones, and I just thought they were awful. But I heard a lot of good things about this one, so I figured $2, it'll be worth just a, a blind buy purchase. Next up is Duplicity with Julia Roberts and Clive Owen. I actually picked this up by accident. I was going through the titles, and I actually dropped this, and I thought I put it back, but it turns out I put it in my stack, and I got kind of sidetracked, and whatever, you know, it'll be a good date movie. I guess they're spies that fall in love. Some comedic elements in there too, from what I remember from the trailers. And next up is an education starring Peter Sarsgaard, Alfred Molina, and Emma Thompson. I wanted to see this for so long, so oh, I was so excited when I saw this for $1.99. You can't beat that price. Think about this. People always ask me, why do you blind buy movies? Why do you go to see a movie in the movie theater that you haven't seen before? Same kind of deal. And if you're getting a movie for a dollar or two dollars or even four dollars, it's well worth it. You think about it, if you rent a movie at, say, Blockbuster, it's like, I don't know, like four or five bucks for a new release. Or you do the red box, it's a dollar a night. So if I take this for two nights, I've already, you know, I paid for it, you know? So if I would have kept the red box movie out for two nights, I mean, that's two dollars plus tax right there. And now I get to own it for two dollars. So there you go. And if I don't like it, I can always give it away or I could sell it or whatever. But basically, from what I recall of this movie, from the trailers and from what I read about it, she's a younger uh, college student and he's an older guy. I'm not sure if he's the professor or not, but uh, they have an affair and it's kind of like a sexual awakening and it's in Britain, I believe. And he introduces her to a whole glamorous world and all kinds of things happen from there. Kind of like a coming of age, sexual awakening kind of movie. It was nominated for a whole bunch of awards, including Best Picture for the Oscars. Of course it didn't win, but I mean, if you're nominated in that category, I'm hoping it'll be a decent movie. Not all movies that win an Oscar or even nominated are great movies. I think there's a lot of politics involved in the Oscars, but this is a movie that intrigued me, so I was very happy to get this one. And next up is My Son, My Son, What Have You Done? Directed by Werner Herzog, and David Lynch is an executive producer on here as well. It's their first collaboration. And of course, Werner Herzog did Nosferatu, The Vampire, back in 79 fantastic movie. One of my favorite vampire movies. Not as great as the original Nosferatu, but still one of the best vampire movies of all time. And of course, Nosferatu the Vampire stars Klaus Kinski. But anyways, back to this movie. It stars Willem Dafoe, Chloe Sevigny, and Michael Shannon. I'm not a huge Michael Shannon fan, but he's serviceable. And it also stars Brad Dorif as well. Willem Dafoe. I definitely like Willem Dafoe and Chloe Sevigny. Ever since Brown Bunny, she's had my heart. Just kidding. If you've seen Brown Bunny, you know what I'm talking about. Apparently this was based on like a true crime story about a young actor who was obsessed with a Greek tragedy and he kills his mother and there's and it just goes from there. And it definitely seems like a very dark psychological thriller and I'm definitely looking forward to checking this one out. I haven't heard anything about it and you know David Lynch executive producer Werner Herzog, well-known director, great director. So I'm hoping for good things. So those are my pickups. If you've seen any of them definitely let me know what you think of them and I hope everybody's doing well. Take care.